Hello guys, okay, welcome back to another video. We are back once again on Sustainable Urban Development Team 3.2. We're going to be covering indicators for sustainable urban development today. Alright, this is something that uh, one of you have actually requested. So I'm going to go through it um, in depth in this video. I've actually gone through a bit of it in a question analysis. I'll link it in the top right hand corner of the screen. That is more of an essay based 12 mark question on how you're going to want to phrase this kind of uh, essay um, when it comes to indicators for sustainable urban development. Alright, without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's go right in. Okay. So when you're measuring sustainable urban development, remember we're looking at cities, right? Because we're looking at urban development. There are always three aspects to SUD you need to take note of, okay? The first aspect is environment. This one is a no-brainer, right? Because whenever we talk about sustainability, we always want to be environmentally su uh, sustainable. The next one that you have would be economic sustainability. This one refers to all your cash, okay? Then lastly, you've got social justice, otherwise known as social sustainability. Okay, when it comes to the three aspects, these are the main three you need to know. Environment, economic, social. Take note of those first. All right. But when it comes to measuring SUD, you need to understand and acknowledge that there are challenges as well. For instance, they are actually holistic in nature, which means that there are many dimensions to one aspect. For instance, when it comes to environmental sustainability, there are so many different elements. There's air pollution, there's noise pollution. Then you've got other factors like waste, traffic congestion, all that kind of things which will come into play. And one more thing is that there may also be intergenerational uh, issues. For instance, different generations have different perspectives as to how SUD should be measured. Alright, so this, you just need to take note. It will never be tested. Don't worry about it. I'm just giving you a brief overview because some of you guys may not really understand the full definition of SUD. You just need to understand that SUD, the definition of it is that it comprises of three different aspects while acknowledging that there are certain challenges to these aspects as well. Okay, so we're going to go into the indicators, the actual indicators in this lecture series. Alright, the first indicator that you have is your SDG 11, Sustainable Development Goal 11. This was coined in 2015, okay, when governments all across the, the world actually came together to re-transform, okay, what was originally the Millennial Development Goals into what it is today, which is your Sustainable Development Goals, okay? So one of it that falls under urban development already that otherwise known as cities, okay, would be your SDG 11. So how SDG 11 goes is to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable um, for basically everyone. Okay, so socially sustainable, environmentally sustainable. When you look at sustainability in this general form, you're looking at all three aspects, all right? So that is what is actually called, my bad, okay. When you actually look at SDG 11, like I've just mentioned, okay, it does touch base on all three aspects of sustainability, right? whereby in terms of social, we have this case over here, whereby it ensures that there's access to housing for everyone. Okay? The purpose of a SDG, of a development goal, is uh, in a sense, it is uh, it's kind of like a light. Okay, It is a target for more cities to try and meet. Right? That is the whole purpose of it. Um, so one of it for social would be to ensure and try and make sure that most people have access to adequate housing, okay, your basic needs that a human needs. Right? Then next you've got economic aspects as well, which comes in the form of building sustainable buildings in your cities as well as utilizing local materials. This will help to boost your local production, your local economy. Lastly, you have got environment, right? It is none other than to reduce your air pollution as well as your waste level. So this one is also very, very simple. This is what SDG 11 is all about. Right, so the part that we want to focus more on that is slightly more important would actually be the evaluation. Because we want to know, right? Although, yes, um, SDG 11 may be able to target all of these aspects, but so what? Right? Are there any limitations to it? So, yes, well, it is indeed a catalyst on a global level to encourage all the relevant authorities, your governments and everyone, to try and make sure that they aim towards these targets. You have to realize and understand that it does require substantial effort as well as a um, a lot of policies and possibly financing that needs to be done because why your less developed countries have lesser finances which means that who must step in your developed countries right your developed cities they have to step in to try and help these poor countries that are suffering okay 
The next indicator would be your Arcadia Sustainable Cities Index. So this one measures across a city, uh, across 100 cities. All right, it ranks 100 cities based on three different dimensions, people, planet, profit. So if you realize people is essentially social justice, planet is basically environmental sustainability, and profit is very, very simply economic sustainability. So likewise, Arcadis, um, the Arcadis Index actually does cover all your three aspects of SUD as well. But as we move on to evaluation once again, you have to understand that yes, while it is very, very easy to compare since um, it goes across all three different um, um, main, the, the foundation, the aspects of SUD, as well as to cover a lot of different uh, measures, right? For instance, over here, it measures health, da, 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 da. These are just some examples. It does have many other indicators, um, sub-indicators as part of this Arcadis Index. You need to understand that it does only cover 100 cities, okay? Go and search up which these 100 cities are. You don't really have to know, but 100 cities is not a lot. It's actually not a lot if you look at the number of cities in the world. So, in that sense, it may actually be skewed in terms of her target audience because it only gathers its... its, um, its indicators from all these hundred cities and not the rest of the other cities that may be having different issues that this index has not actually recognized. So the third indicator that we have would be the GRI, right? Your Global Reporti uh, Reporting Initiative. This is a very interesting one because it only targets organizations. So how about the GR GRI does, right? It's basically an independent organization that is international. And what they do is they aim to help other governments. They aim to help governments, businesses, as well as other um, organizations in terms of meeting their SUD, their Sustainable Urban Development um, um, targets. All right. So what they do is they encourage all these businesses to report on their environmental performance. This will give them a better indication of what needs to be done. All right. So this indicator itself, right, in order to even measure all these businesses and all, they do have their own set of 30 indicators, which can help to measure a bit of what a company and all does. But as you realize, it's not a lot. Okay, 30 indicators, you spread across all three aspects, it's not exactly a lot. And one more thing that you need to realize is that it only focuses on reporting by firms. What does that mean? Okay, when you only want to report, uh, when you only want firms to report to you, right, it may actually result in your your results being slightly inaccurate, right? Because firms usually want to work things into their favor. They are always profit uh, motivated and sometimes the environment may not exactly be something of their top priority. But in order to make it seem as though they are doing fine, they may report to the GRI things that are not exactly the truth. So in that case, um, you may always uh, have a case whereby your results and your this indicator as a whole may actually be inaccurate instead. Okay, so they tend to favor quantity over quality instead. So quality is usually like luster in this case. All right, our fourth strategy, which I think should be the last, okay, I missed out one, which is your Bellagio stand because I don't think that's very important. I think these are the main four which you should be focusing on. The UK government strategy indicators, this one is so special because this one only covers the UK. So it's only one city, right? So this is basically done whereby there's this sustainable development commission within the UK whereby they get a feedback um, in the city itself, right? So there are workshops which are hosted by different NGOs in the interest of uh, achieving SUD, right? And basically, this whole indicator is very, very simple. What they do is they measure how the city is doing and that is essentially their indicator. So one unique thing about this is that it does involve NGOs and communities, right? Because they're only working within their city, within only the United Kingdom. So it's a very, very bottom-up approach, right? Everyone has a voice to say, but like what it is even in the title itself, right? It only focuses on one city. So it's only specific to UK, hence it may not be applicable to other cities. So whatever that uh, UK may be facing is may not actually be what other cities like Singapore or um, New Delhi or any other cities out there are facing. So in that case, you realize that this indicator has its flaw, whereby it is only on a localized scale. You cannot use it on a macro, a regional or global scale at all. That is the limitation to it. Okay, so like in every other video that I've gone through, right, I always want to cover what are your exam requirements so you know what you're studying this topic for. Right, this topic is very, very simple. You're going to have just need to understand the different indicators which are used to measure SUD, which I've just gone through the four different ones. Take note that these indicators are not the same as those used to measure livability, right? If I have the time, I'll definitely want to produce uh, this video in time before your before your papers. If not, at least for the next, uh, or, the, or whenever your papers are, for the next few um, batches who are watching this. But if not, um, 
I'll try to cover the indicators for livability because it is actually much, much more different and it's very much harder, I would say, than this. So this is actually very simple. It's just to measure SUD as a whole and it tends to be 12 mark um, essay question, which I've already left the link in the top right corner of the screen. Go check it out. Okay, because the essay question which I did is actually uh, one that is likely to come out for your any of your tests, in fact, because it is a very, very common question that it's somewhat easy to answer but you need to show evaluation as well yeah if not that is actually all i have for this video okay if you did enjoy it be sure to leave a like okay do subscribe as well it really does help the channel out a lot and do leave a comment if you have any questions if not the next video i'll be releasing should be on traffic congestion as um, suggested by some of you guys i will definitely try and upload that by hopefully tomorrow okay because um i currently have a bit of a tight schedule and that video is still in still editing uh. So after traffic congestion, I'll try and release urban livability. If not, I will try and cover a bit of waste management as well as your social groups, so your elderly and um, your disabled people, all that kind of good stuff. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, peace out.